Hello everybody! Welcome to Something Political's third video. In this video, we will talk about the second sub-school of the realism, structural realism or neorealism. Structural realists, just like classical realists, think that state is the principal actor of politics that is able to cause or prevent violence. Also, they argue that decision makers are rational actors. They make their decisions after going through a rationally constructed decision-making process. Power and security are the two core concepts for structural realists and classical realists. They also accept the realist concepts like anarchy, national interest, uncertainty, and they have a pessimistic view about the human nature and do not really believe in progress when it comes to the selfish human beings. The school of structural realism is represented by Kenneth Waltz and John Mersheimer. Waltz and the structural realists' most significant distinctive standpoint is their emphasis on the global system. Basically, for structural realists, the Hobbesian state of nature, or human nature which is selfish according to the classical realists, is not necessarily the primary factor that drives states into conflict. Instead, they advocate that what drives states into conflict and wars is the system itself. This system is defined by anarchy and the constant struggle for the balance of power. So, the equation goes like this. Anarchy in IR simply means that there is no central authority or a single and more powerful actor above states to maintain a peaceful environment or, let's say, for states to go and complain anytime anything bad happens. Remember, realists think that the principal objective of the states is always to maximize their national interests. Now we add anarchy in the picture. What did we get? An anarchical environment with full of states that try to maximize their own interests. In such an environment, realists expect states to rely on their own resources and capabilities like military equipment or economic power. Now we add the last realist element to the picture. Uncertainty. Since each state tries to maximize its own interests, no state can trust another one. So, what happens to our picture? States as interest maximizer, trying to survive in an anarchical environment where nobody will come to the rescue other than states themselves. Therefore, as our structural realist equation suggests, in order to maintain a conflict-free environment to not to harm themselves and risk their survival, states always try to balance the most powerful and aggressive actor in the system. Structural realists say that this equation is the reason why there is always a struggle, a conflict among states. Because states have to invest in their material capabilities in order to balance an aggressor, and that creates a security dilemma. Both sides are likely to end up in an accelerating arms race, even though their initial aim was to protect themselves. So, for structural realists or neorealists, War is embedded in the structure of world politics rather than being a pure result of the selfish human nature. Neorealism has its own sub-schools as well. Defensive realism and offensive realism both agree on the anarchical structure of the political system and argue that power is a means, not an end in that context. But Defensive realists support the idea that all states want to survive before taking the next step and conquer the world. According to defensive realism represented by Kenneth Waltz, states do not seek to maximize their power, but to protect their status quo in the system in the first place. On the other hand, according to offensive realism represented by John Mersheimer, 
States are always in the process of searching for opportunities to gain more and more power over their opponents, and they eventually would like to be the world hegemon. In order to do that, states constantly invest in their military capabilities, and that is, according to the defense realists, a bit too costly. So that brings us to the end of this very short video about structural realism. We will continue with the prominent figures of the school of neorealism in our next videos. If you liked the video, please do not forget to like it and for our other videos, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.